home of Iowa Hawkeye Gymnastics, and in about a month or so, home of Big Ten Gymnastics in 2023. I'm John Evans, alongside my favorite broadcast partner, Kira Hayden. Kira, how are you? I'm doing pretty well tonight. You know, it's very exciting that we get to experience this arena. The girls get to get their feet wet and get excited for Big Tens. It's a pretty cool arena. We were talking beforehand. First time, first time for both teams in here, but in for Big Tens in a month, a little bit of an advantage for both teams and, and maybe Michigan State, who has some designs on winning the Big Ten, to, to get a sneak preview of what the uh, what it feels like here in, in Extreme Arena. Yeah, you know, they get to experience a little bit of the atmosphere. Big Tens is super high energy and super exciting to happen. Might be a little bit different with the arrangement, but they at least get to experience it and have some fun. Yeah, I imagine they'll be at... Uh, first time there's probably a little bit of tweaking it's like well this didn't quite work right and then like we were talking about before you're going to add a few more teams to each session so you're trying to figure out how to keep your crowd separated people moving and flow and all that fun stuff yes we, you know we have a pretty big crowd right now and it looks like people are still coming in so that's really nice to see now this uh as we talked we were here two weeks ago we were over in carver iowa took on minnesota we talked about how should be a pretty evenly match, evenly matched meet, and we left with a tie. Yes. <laughs> now tonight we've got uh, Iowa had a good meet last week, took down Nebraska in Lincoln. Now we'll come up against um, a Michigan State squad that was picked second in the Big Ten, uh, but has already shown some some exceptional form this year. Yes, Michigan State has been having a remarkable season this year. So has Iowa. But it's so nice to see Michigan State, you know, up on the rise and doing so well in the Big Ten. It's just exciting to see Big Ten teams, you know, pushing their way into the top ten spots in the country. It's really exciting. It's one of those where uh, uh, the rising tide raises all boats, right? You get uh, judges respect you a little bit more around the country then because, oh, you guys are pretty good. Yes. So we'll have tonight. Uh, Michigan State will be starting on on the bars after last week they tied their had their season high 197.45 which tied for fourth all time uh, and they're doing it with a pretty young squad Iowa uh, will start on the vault and it's been very consistent this year everything's kind of 196 to high 196 haven't quite been able to break through to that 197 yet yes you know hopefully with the energy and the team camaraderie they'll be able to push into that higher maybe 196 maybe even reach that 197 they have that potential for sure so i just hope that they're able to do it tonight we were talking they've got iowa and michigan state go about it a little bit differently with iowa will have nobody that competes in all four events so nobody in the all-around whereas michigan state will have three interestingly enough it's a sophomore and two freshmen that'll that'll be competing in the all-around for michigan state yes michigan state along with iowa they have a lot of you know, those newcomers that we have coming into those lineups, those freshmen, those sophomores, because both teams graduated a good amount of seniors last year. And talking to Coach Rowe earlier in the week, uh, he, one of the things that he mentioned was, was kind of the turnaround, and, and we talked a little bit about that with the seniors as they left, you know, wanting to kind of improve the legacy, and you've really seen that last year was, was as you look at the Michigan State record book, just it rewritten. Uh, with with new high scores on every apparatus and, and all around and they have to figure out now how to carry that on because again it's for for all the experience they have it's young and and it's interesting them with Iowa trying to uh, you know graduating like a Lauren Guerin and how do you how do you replace that and, and still keep moving forward and, and that's the uh, that's the beauty of college athletics yeah you know Michigan State coming off of last season with a historic run and, you know, I think they're still doing that. They might have some hiccups here and there, but every team does every now and then. And with Iowa, you know, you can never replace a Lauren Guerin on floor or vault or wherever she may be put into lineup. But there's definitely those places that you can fill in but not have that same potential maybe. But over time they will because, you know, they are starting very small with the freshmen and the sophomores, and just over time they'll grow. So we saw it a little bit last year. You know, Iowa starting out kind of in the 196s and, and building and trying to, you know, improve those scores and eventually making it 
um, all the way to the regionals in, in the NCAA, and of course Adeline advancing even farther. How do you, what's the build? What are you looking for kind of, yeah, I suppose we're approaching almost mid-season now, but you know, is it is it as simple as you start to kind of tune in your lineup a little bit, but strategically get rest, fix, you know, those little hops on landings? What, what are you looking for to, to go from, you know, 196.7 to 197.1 or the type of scores that'll, that'll keep your season going as long as you want? Yeah, so right now, you know, a lot of teams are hitting that mid-season and a lot of coaches are working on solidifying those lineups to be consistent through to the end of season. Um, and just working on, you know, those stuck landings, as you said, staying in bounds on floor for potential, you know, increasing that you know, 196.95 to that 197 and just having better form overall. Yeah, because it's, uh, as you find out, and as we saw two weeks ago in, in Carver, the margin is thin. You know, the, uh, we, had the, we had the two evenly ranked teams and they walked away tied because, you know, we thought one of the floor exercises might be a little better and you looked at it and she actually stepped out of bounds. And yes. so it's a little different. It's all about who's gonna hit, who's coming to play, and who's the consistent. Avery Chambers will get started for the Hawkeyes. Yes, she's going to start off our vault lineup. You know, we're starting a freshman. She competed last weekend in vault as well. So it's really exciting to see her getting her time into this lineup. A freshman from Lombard, Illinois. Very nice, your Tango Full. You know, your Tango Fools are out of a 995 start value. So a little lower than maybe those one and a halfs or other bigger vaults that some may be competing, but you know, it's a solid vault. So great to see her starting as the Hawks. Skyla Schulte over on the uneven bar. She's a sophomore, one of the all arounders for Michigan State. Yes, and you know, she had a remarkable season last year and she's continuing to do so with her remarkable season this far too. And I just love her gymnastics, it's beautiful. Very nice bar routine. She's tied for 11th in the all around in the Big Ten. Up next for the Hawks, Allison Zulke on the vault. Yes, and you know, her vault is pretty unique. It's named after her, it's an exciting vault. It's out of a 10-0 start value, so let's see if she can hone in and find this stick. It's like a 9-7-7-5 for Avery Chambers, which is a tenth of a point improvement over last week for her, so good, yeah. good step in the right direction. Yes, for sure. Waiting for the green flag to go on the vault here. Yeah, we might be waiting for the broadcasting. I don't know. <laughs> and 9 8 for Skyla Schulte. So she has a unique entry with a front handspring on to the board. And that was a beautiful vault from Allison Zoki. Very well done there. Sage Kellerman up next, another freshman in the Michigan State lineup. She's got a season high. Actually, season high 9 9 on the bars. This might be her first time competing on the bars. 9 9 is her best score on the vault. So branching her out a little bit here this week. As you know, over the past couple weekends just following Michigan State, they're very consistent on hitting those handstands on top of the bar. And they're also pretty good with finding those landings at the end of their team. A little shy of that. Beautiful. Uh, just missed the bar. talked about this before she gets 30 seconds to regroup yes kind of gather herself and, and continue her routine yeah so she'll chalk up probably talk to coach Rowe about where they're going to get back in and start up while we're waiting for that nine eight two five for allison zulke on the vault so 
good score for her. That'll actually, not quite her season high, but an improvement over the last couple weeks. Start here. There we go. Beautiful handstand. Very nice girl. Another handstand finishing on top of the bar. Into a double tuck. Almost a stick, had to hop, hop forward just a little bit. Good bounce back, nice finish there. Yes. Got Kendall LaPlante next, the junior from Seminole, Florida. Yes, I love watching her vault. She has so much power, so hopefully she can control it and find this landing. There, just outside of the, just outside of the uh, railroad track lines. Yeah, she had a pretty sizable hop, so she'll get a deduction for that, and then probably a directional deduction as well. But overnight, overall, a good Yurchenko hole. Gabby Steven up next. And so six participants for each team, and only five count. So kind of a little bit of pressure here on the remaining four Spartans. Yes, Michigan State. You know, each individual will hone in and focus and try to make the best of their routine so that way they can drop that score. It's like 9 7 two, five for Kendall. Steven, another one of those all-around athletes for the Spartans. The bars are her weakest event, but she's third in the Big Ten in the all-around, 18th in the country. So pretty solid, uh, solid performances so far this season for the sophomore. Yes, yeah, she is a very powerful gymnast. Um, her bars, you know, every gymnast has their strengths and their weaknesses, but we say it as a weakness, but her bars are beautiful. She's coming off a season high 9.875 at Penn State on the bars, so might be finding her a little bit of a groove here. Yes, it looks like the judges are just meeting, so that's what the hold up is a little bit. And that would be trying to, that when they each score, they have to be within kind of a certain range, right? And I'm sure with the fall, it became a little bit more difficult to score that event. Yes judges have to take into account the fall and how much they're taking on the deductions and one judge might be higher than the other so they just meet to converse and see what's going on. So it's like 9, 9.075 for Sage Keller. Oh, they're still having a conference. He's got the ready break from the judges to this point so Yes, it looks like the head judge went over and was in on the conference as well, just to make sure everything was correct. Any type of disruption for Gabby then as she gets ready to perform? Is she like icing the kicker or a timeout for the free throw shooter? Is that she just wants to get going or is That it definitely it can be a thing. You know, a lot of the times when gymnasts are waiting to go, and they have that pause like that with the coaches meeting or a judges meeting, they would look towards their teammates and just, you know, keep that energy going and focus and get ready to settle down and start the routine. She'll get on her way here. Beautiful handstand. Into Maloney. 
Very nice handstand on top of the bar. Into a bell handstand. A little shy of that handstand. Let's see if she can find this just Ooh. with a stuck landing. Very nice. Well done there from Gabby Steven. Nice bounce back. Yes, the pause didn't even affect her. <laughs> just, maybe it's just me. <laughs> Karina Munoz. Yeah, she had a beautiful vault last weekend in Nebraska. Very nice. Slight hop back, but very good form in the air. She tied for the win last week on the vault, 985. Freshman from East Brunswick, New Jersey. Jory Jackard. One of the few seniors on the Michigan State team will be next up on the on the bars. Nine eight five for Gabby Steven. Very nicely done there. Munoz with a 985 as well. Very nice handstand to start off the routine. Beautiful release. A little over on that immediate bail to handstand. See if she can find this landing. Slay hop forward, but very nice routine. She struggled last week, but it looks like she's going to have a good bounce back score this week. Yes, you know, some, some weekends you're on, some weekends you just are not. <laughs> Linda Zivit up next for the Hawks. Actually a Michigan State transfer. Yes, she has been a great addition to this Hawkeye team. And I just love her overall personality and excitement that she brings. I spent more time last year in the practice gym. Uh, and, and just, yeah, the energy she brings, just practicing her floor routine, all those things. She's always got a giant smile. Yes, she is going to be another 10-0 start value in our vault lineup with the soup full, beautiful stuck landing. Probably has the tongue out, but I'm too far away to see. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Zivit, very nicely done. Up next for Michigan State, Nikki Smith. Another freshman and another all-around competitor. Yes, she has been a standout freshman for Michigan State this far. 9.875 for Jory Jackard. Very nice bar team so far from the freshman. Beautiful handstand. Double layout into a stuck Ooh. landing. What a nice routine from the freshman. Very nicely done there. Give Linda a 9-9 on the vault for the Hawkeyes, and that'll bring up Jerquavia Henderson. Q's been a pretty good anchor through the years. You know, her ball is just beautiful. It just soars through the air. It is huge. She is working on that Yurchenko one and a half. So hopefully she can get that in in the next couple meets. She's just competing the Yurchenko full. Beautiful, slight hop back, but that was very nice from Q. Finishing it up for Michigan State on the bars would be Delaney Harkness. Again, one of those rare upperclassmen. She's a junior. Competes on the bars and the floor. Yes, and her bar routine is just beautiful. She's constantly flowing. Her form is gorgeous.
great release. Very nice build to handstand. Very nice routine. Finish strong. Nikki Smith with a 9.875 as well. Delaney Harkness will look for a score in that range as well, I would guess. Yes, you know, Michigan State, they don't have to count that ball in their routine, so that's a great finish from them. So Quavia Henderson also puts up a 9.9. I thought we were going to get a Hawkeye exhibition on the vault, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Yeah, you know, sometimes they put that on there just to, if they want to, but you can easily just take it away. <laughs> sure. But it looks like Michigan State is going to do their exhibition. Be Sydney Hayashi, another junior from Westerville, Ohio. And so when they're doing this, it's, you know, trying to figure out how are we going to bust them. Competing with the lights on so that it's can I bust into the lineup? Can I win my spot? You know, I, I've, I've maybe shown enough stuff in the practice gym to get a chance um, I didn't quite win this time, but maybe I can win next time. Yes, that is you know exhibition is You know, they've been doing what they're supposed to in practice So the coaches want to see what they can do on the competition stage as well And you know if they prove themselves during the exhibition they can then eventually be in lineup throughout the rest of the season or if Coaches want to rest one of their main all-arounders. They can throw them in. This is a very nice routine. Beautiful double layout. Almost had the stick. Had to take a step back, but very nice routine. So Linda Zivit and Q Henderson lead the Hawkeyes on the vault with a pair of nine nines. And Michigan State comes up with a great team score. Just good balance all around after a a uh, tough routine there, Nikki Smith and Jory Jackard, both with 9875, but actually five routines at 98 or higher. Pretty good uh, pretty good finish for the Spartans. Yes. We will head to the we'll just basically flip now. Hawks will head to the bars. Spartans will head to the vault. We're tied at 49.25. Yes, it's going to be a great meet. We're going to take a quick break. We're watching Big 10 gymnastics on Big 10 Plus.
Welcome back to Extreme Arena and Big Ten Gymnastics. John Evans, Kira Hayden. Witnessed a pretty, uh, pretty good first rotation for both teams as we come out of it even at 49.25. Yeah, it was very good gymnastics overall. You know, each team is fighting for those landings and trying to find the good form in the vault and the bars. And overall, I think they're having a blast down there. It's just looking at, uh, you know, that was a, a second best. Last week, Michigan State came with 49.4 on on the bars, and that was uh, on their way to their fourth best team score in history. So I, I, they've fallen off a little bit of that pace, but but overall got to be pleased with a good, consistent performance. And Hawks probably looking for just a little bit more out of their vault, but there was nothing terrible. It was just clean up a little bit of a landing here and there, and, and all of a sudden... Uh, like we talked about in the beginning of the broadcast, those scores get to where you want them to be. Yes, and you know, their main focus, I believe, on bars after having that fall was just hitting, being clean, and making sure they, ha they didn't have to count that fall. They did a very nice job there. And we'll see a lot of the, uh, the same athletes from Michigan State as we get into the vault. And Michigan State, I think, no, actually, they're the number one beam team, no, the number two beam team in the Big Ten, number eight in the country, number one on the beam in the Big Ten, and number ten in the country there. So, if they have a quote-unquote weakness, it was it was there on the bars. They're just fourth in the Big Ten and 19th in the country. But again, a very consistent team overall. Just seeing outstanding performances. And I know this one's one that you know a little bit about, having uh, having a little bit closer tie to. Uh, to maybe the bars routine for the Hawkeyes? Yes, you know, bars always makes me so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I just want them to do well, like I know they can, um, and they just need to know that they can do well as well. That's, uh, the self-confidence and self-belief goes a long way in, in this sport, doesn't it? Yes, you know, I was talking to Quest before the meet, and he did say that you know, he wants to start solidifying the lineup on bars, but he's still testing out a few to see where he wants to finalize and make it permanent for the rest of the season. Sure. Nia Smith will get us started on the vault for the Spartans. Not to be confused with her younger sister, Nikki Smith, who will participate later. Yes, Naya is a very strong lead-off for them. Averaging 9.8 on this season, so pretty good first buoy in the water if they can pull that. Very nice, your tank will pull. Great start there. And the Hawks will turn to Allison Zelke to lead off on the bars. been a three event competitor here in recent weeks for the Hawkeyes. Yes, she has been a very solid competitor for the Hawkeyes. Beautiful handstand into a Hindor. Gonna do a pat. Beautiful half pirouette. Get this last handstand and she does. Find this landing, double tuck, stick this mount. Very beautiful routine to start off the Hawks on bars. Teammates love it. They come rushing out to her. Bailey Garcia up next for the Spartans. She's a very pretty vault. Beautiful slight slide back, but that was beautiful in the air. Average is 9.8. She's done a really fine job there at the beginning of the Michigan State lineup. Karina McSweeney will be up next for the Hawks. Just up the road in Cedar Rapids. Get Nia Smith 9825 on her vault.
good nine eight there from Garcia. So we still wait for Zelke's score. Slight hop back, but a very nice routine from Karina. Good speed there on the final swings to generate that height on the release. 9.825 for Zelke. We'll see what McSweeney scores. Skylar Schulte up next for the Spartans. Ooh. Wow, a stuck landing on that Yurchenko full. That was beautiful. There's a season high 9-9 nine, nine at Michigan. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit better than that. <laughs> she, she, might, she might put that one in jeopardy there. Marissa Rojas up next for the Hawks. Yeah, there it is, 9-9. Nine, nine. I like these scoreboards, I can see them. I can't, we talked about, I can't quite see the bars. They've got to turn at an angle and it's a long ways away. I know, they have us up in the corner. <laughs> and they've got the digital scoreboards here so you can see them when they post it up there. So 9-9 nine, nine for Schulte. Again, still waiting on score it seems like it's uh the vault just happens so much quicker and the, the scores are so much faster than uh than what you get on the bars yes there's a, a lot less to judge give it nine seven seven five for mcsweeney She finds the landing. Very nice routine from Marissa. So would you say a little short or a little over? What type of deduction are you talking about there? Well, it depends on how short. If it's just a little shy of the handstand, a half a tenth. But sometimes if it's pretty short, judges will take a full tenth. Sage Kellerman up next. Yes, and her ball is a very unique entry. Front on. Oh, almost had the stick. Had to take a slight hop. Almost looked like she was a little short into the uh, into the pommel there. Ella Castellanos will be up next for the Hawkeyes. score last week tied for second in the meet at Nebraska had a 9-8 yes she was uh, I believe supposed to be exhibition last weekend and then put into lineup and she did what she was supposed to do 9-7-7-5 for Rojas as well and a 9-8-2-5 for Kellerman so good scoring on the four vaults for Michigan State so far. Beautiful hands on top of the bar to 
Straddle Ray. Very nice height. He's going to finish with a double layout. Let's see if she can find this landing. She does! What a beautiful routine from Ella. Very nicely done. That could challenge her season best there. Yes, I believe it will. That was so nice. Nikki Smith averaging 9.865 on the vault. Up next for the Spartans. One and a half. Trying really hard to stick that, but had to hop back. Great speed and power coming down the lane. Just couldn't quite hold that last, that last finish. Adeline Kenlin will get the next shot at the bars for the Hawkeyes. the best bar score there for the Hawkeyes in the last one, right? Yes, I believe Ella did what she was supposed to. You know, she had very pretty form in her whole routine. She hit those handstands and she found the landing. Let's see, nine, eight for Nikki Smith. As the hop, the hop proved a little costly for her. Yes. the delays in the bar scoring they're all getting iced yes the judging is a little bit slower but that's okay looks like they're gonna have a conference So since the judges do set in different places, maybe one saw feet split or didn't see the handstand complete and that could cause a difference in scores enough to... Well, most of the time when judges have a conference is if they gave credit to specific skills. Put you on the spot, we haven't talked about this, but Obviously, you've got to touch both bars. What are some of the other requirements in a bars routine right now? So you have to have a release. You have to have um, a connection from low to high, or high to low, vice versa. And obviously, you have to have the dismount. And there's, there's a lot of skills that can go into a bar routine with a lot of different uh, ranges of the level of the skill. Um, most of the time when there's a blindfold double tuck, that's a D skill. And then if you have the double layouts, the full ends, that's your E skill. And that's one of the things I kind of learned last year from Coach Libby. When you end up adding all those up, because they all have values and degrees of difficulty, that's then how you get to the, the start value, basically, of your event, right? Yes, yes. Start with a toe hand into a Maloney. Little leg separation on the Maloney into a pack. Very pretty switch kip. Slight swing of the arms, so that will be a deduction. Into a double tuck. With a stuck landing. Very beautiful bar routine. Good finish there. Judges didn't like Castellanos' routine quite as much as I thought. 9.725. And Gab yeah. Gabby Steven will finish up on the vault for the Spartans. Not sure what happened. Might have been too far away to see what happened. <laughs> Beautiful, your jiggle forward. was so big in the air. Had to take a slight hop back because she had so much power, but normally she finds that landing and it's beautiful. Karina Munoz will finish it up for the Hawks. So when Adeline got stuck on the low bar there, and is that a, 
Again, is that a tenth? Is that two? Probably a half. Probably a half, okay. We'll see if it causes a judge's conference. State had, again, had a athlete listed for exhibition, but it doesn't look like Zarmani will participate. So as they are just making their move over to the floor already. Although I say that. She will finish with a free hit to an immediate double layout, which is pretty hard to do. <laughs> Beautiful stack landing. What a nice routine. She loves it. And you were, you were right on Adeline Kenlin. Kenlin, 9.8 for her. So we'll see if, if the Hawks can get rid of the 9725 with a little bit better score here. Getting that 9825, get the score up over 49. You're probably pretty happy with it all in all. Yes. Michigan State will have a 49.2 on the vault. As again, just very good consistency. 9.8 to 9.8. 9.8 to 9.9. .9. All six athletes. Do they have a strong vault lineup? The Michigan State will roll over to the floor. Hawkeyes will move to the beam. And we've got a fighting chance of seeing these two events now. Yeah, they've come a little closer. <laughs> Oh, fabulous. Karina Munoz with a 9.85 gives the Hawks a 49.025 on the bars. So we'll be through two events. Aubrey Nick's going to have an exhibition routine first. Beautiful release from Aubrey. A little short on that handstand. Double layout. Slay hop back, but that was a great routine. Good solid finish for her. Yes, it's nice to see her getting into that line, trying to get into that lineup. So we'll have a three way tie on the vault. Sky Schulte, Linda Zivit, and Q Henderson at 9 9 and split the bars title between two Spartans, Nikki Smith, Nikki Smith and Jory Jackard at 9.875. And the Spartans will hold a slim lead as we head, uh, head to the halftime break, 98.45 to 98.275. Anything you want to say before we head to break? I don't think so. <laughs> All right. We're at halftime. We'll take a short break. You're watching Big Ten Gymnastics on Big Ten Plus.
Welcome back to Big Ten Gymnastics here in Extreme Arena, Iowa and Michigan State. John Evans, Kira Hayden. Good, uh, good competitive meet through two events. Yes, you know, each team is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, bars could have been a little bit stronger for Iowa, but overall they're doing well. Hawks will be on the beam. Start with Q Henderson. Michigan State will be on the floor. Okay, so it's probably Hawks tend to be a little bit stronger on the floor, so maybe this is a and the Hawks are pretty good on the beam, so maybe again, we should have two pretty close events here as we as we try to get to the finish line and see who can uh, maybe push into that 197 scoring range. Yes, uh, you know, Michigan State pretty strong on both events to finish, and so is Iowa. They had a really good beam competition last weekend at Nebraska, so let's hope they can repeat that. Beautiful controlled full turn. Very solid. She just exudes power, doesn't she? She really does. But she really knows how to control it, too. <laughs> She's going to finish with a pretty difficult dismount, run off double tag. Hop back, but very nice beam routine for Q. It's a solid hit. Good first, good first opportunity for a score there. A little balance check and a hop on the landing, and otherwise looked pretty clean. Yes, it was. Nia Smith will start off the floor for the Spartans. Opening up at the front through the double tuck, very controlled landing. Beautiful jumps. Judges are really looking to see those legs extend above 180. Oh, it looks like she stepped out of bounds on that last pass. She said too much power. 9-8 for Q Henderson. We'll see how Smith gets scored there. As it looked like she stepped out on the side of the mat there. Allison Zelke up next for the Hawks. to take the fall. Thought she was going to get away with just the balance check, but couldn't quite pull it back in. Very nice finish from Z. So I'll put it in the rest of the Hawks' hands to do what Michigan State did on the first 
on the bars to pick up their teammate. Yes, and that's you know why we have those teammates there to pick it up. Gianna Khalifi next. 9-9 nine, nine last week against Penn State. We were a little late coming back on from the last break with had some, some of the volleyball coaches and people come through. I do volleyball as well. We had field hockey here earlier that we saw. It's pretty pretty impressive team supporting other teams here. Yes. Trying to get as many female teams in one arena. You know, Title IX's the big topic this year. Sometimes those step forwards are can kind of be masked in the landing, but that that was probably a deduction, correct? No, if they are tumbling forward and they're landing forward, they can take the step with zero deduction, okay. depending on how controlled the step is. Um, and that looked like a pretty controlled one. When they get the deduction is if they're doing back tumbling and they step forward on the left. Perfect, thank you. Lost the bounce on that and couldn't get quite around. So a 9.775 for Nia Smith, a 9.05 for Allison Zelke. So I know the mats are out there for uh, kind of protect your landing a little bit, but does it have a bearing when you're trying to make that pass that maybe you don't quite get the bump you want? Depends on how you're coming in on your pass. Looks like she was, her feet were a little far behind her, so she wasn't able to get the correct bounce on the pass for her. Alexa Ebling up for the Hawks. Very nice series. Very nice for an aerial. A little bobble on that. Let's see if she can find this landing. She does. Beautiful beam routine. Good answer there for Ebling to pick up her teammate. And Delaney Harkness will have to do the same now for the Spartans. Haven't seen Gianna's score come up yet. Yes, they are probably still working on what they're going to take and deduct. talked about with the with the bar routines there's probably in, it, with all those different elements it's all right did we lose a tenth here did we lose half a tenth here as you try to add all those up you can see where there might get to be a difference of opinion pretty easily yes same goes into effect on the beam and the floor too but the vault's obviously the most straightforward one yes <laughs> Five for Khalifi. Delaney Harkness up next.
Beautiful open pass. Did have too much power and ended up stepping out with one foot. Beautiful jumps. Very nice pass. Overall, good for your team. Just had that slight step out of bounds, but that was very good. Good job there from Harkness. 9.8 for Alexa Ebling. Aubrey Nick up next for the Hawkeyes. Beautiful series from Aubrey. Very nice friend Ariel. She's just moving through this routine. Do a round off one and a half. To a stuck. Ooh, I don't know. They might give it to her, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she immediately went into the uh, thank you, thank you. That was a good quick move. The college there. stick finish. <laughs> exactly. Ebling with a 9 8. Good score for her. Her best score since the Super 16 meet to kick off the season. And Gabby Steven will be up next for the Spartans. Still waiting on a floor score there for Harkness. Nine seven two five for Delaney. That's getting punished a little bit for the step out. Yes. She really knows how to fly high in her passes. Average is 9.87 on the season. <laughs> Opening up with a front through to a double pike. Had a lot of power, but she was able to stay in bounds. Still will have a deduction for the hot back, though. Very pretty leaps. Looks like we're <laughs> very nice. Very nice for our team. Routine there from Steven, 985 for Aubrey Nick. I started to laugh because of how much they're trying to get this wave started in this arena. <laughs> We were talking at the uh, the break there. They all kind of moved this way, so we don't have quite the full arena to do the uh, to do the wave. Marissa Rojas up next for the Hawks. Yes, I'm excited to see her back in the lineup. Beautiful 
beautiful full turn. She is doing a triple series. Couldn't quite stay on. So that means the Hawks will have to kind of follow this rota rotation. She's going to finish this routine to the best of her ability with the strongest she can so that way they can get a higher score and see which one they're going to come. Beautiful stuck landing. Gabby Steven with a 9.85 over on the floor for the Spartans and that'll bring up Nikki Smith. Yeah, the Hawks will end up counting a low 9.0, a 9 point something, 9.05. Is the selfie score that they'll still try to get in front of. Yes, and you know, those triple series are just, they're pretty hard, you know. You could be off in the slightest bit. Looks like we're getting some energy back on floor. I was wondering where they've been. Beautiful opening pass. Very nice and controlled landing on that last pass. I'm gonna finish the round off the handspring double tuck. Beautiful landing. This is a great routine. See why she's top 10 in the Big Ten. Yes. Averaging almost well, 9.885. Good solid routine there. Melissa Rojas ended up with a nine even. Yes, yeah, so they will be looking to count Allison's score instead of Marissa's. Adeline Kenlin will finish it up for the Hawks on the bar or on the beam. Yes. She is the beam queen. Second in the NCH last year. Beautiful series. She just flows right into her jumps. This is a beautiful routine so far. So solid. And she sticks to dismount. What a beautiful routine. Oh my gosh, that should be a pretty high score. That should get it done. 9875 for Nikki Smith over on the floor. But a good finish up for the Hawkeyes on the beam after a tough rotation. Skyla Shelty will anchor the floor lineup for the Spartans. Skyla's floor is amazing to watch. She is high flying as well very powerful and she just commands the arena nine nine two fives her best this season nine five nine nine five last year was her best so it's one of those like a couple of the hawkeyes on the floor that scare a 10 a lot of times when they head out there uh we had nine nine five 
Looks like we had 110 spun up there by one of the judges. the mat a little bit differently in the corner there for Skylar Shelty so they're having to put down some extra tape to mark the boundary. She has a very powerful tumbling to her. Beautiful jump. Such a fun routine and her teammates getting in and on it. Front through to a round of pinspring double tuck. Very nice landing. What a great routine from Kyla. I think three muscles, two ligaments, and a tendon just tore her mind <laughs> watching that routine. <laughs> Very nicely done. Alex Bradford. In an exhibition routine for the Hawkeyes. Yes, this is her second time in the exhibition spot this season. Very nice routine. She finished, she was fighting the whole time. She did great. We didn't have the exhibition routine listed for yeah, they, Ellie Buffet to do this, do the floor for Michigan State now. events will be 147.525 for Michigan State, 146.725. Hawks not able to overcome two different falls on the beam. Yes, so, you know, head coach Larissa Libby is probably pulling them together and telling them, you know, we're going to fight on floor, we're going to go have a dance party and just leave it all out there. Beautiful opening pass.
very fun exhibition routine. The teammates getting in on the dancing, cheering her on. Rudy, last pass, slight pike down and had to take a step forward. Very nice. Nine, eight, two, five for. Or I'm sorry, nine eight five for Skylar Schulte there. And we'll switch. Michigan State will head over here to the beam. Hawks will head to the floor. And that'll be uh, that'll be it as we get ready to start the uh, the warm up clock. Or the uh, I guess we get the two minutes to move and then four minutes to touch. So yes. we'll go ahead and take our last or not our last break. We'll go ahead and take another break. <laughs> You're watching Big Ten gymnastics on Big Ten Plus.
Welcome back to Big Ten Gym. gym Let's start that over. <laughs> Welcome back to Big Ten Gymnastics here at Extreme Arena. John Evans, Kira Hayden. I just wanted to, uh, you know, we kind of we, we prepare, we do all the things. I wanted to thank uh, Coach Rowe. He did a he spent more time than he needed to spend with me this week as we got on a call. He had some he had some IT trouble. Uh, and was still able to spend uh, a good amount of time with me earlier in the week. And one of the things that we talked about before the broadcast, and I just wanted to make sure we brought up, and we talked a little bit about how uh, maybe the culture coming out of COVID, and, and Coach Rowe talked about the COVID restrictions, how difficult they were on his team. Uh, and, and it took the senior class from last year to really to, to kind of buckle up and say enough's enough you know we, we're better than this we want to do better than this and, and they started to try to instill a new culture and one of the things that that he said to me and, and you and i talked about it before and, and hadn't really heard of it was this year now having lost those seniors and, and having a relatively young team he sent the he sent the team to to have leadership classes to try to you know not everybody's a natural born leader and and we all just assume if somebody's good at something, maybe they can snap their fingers and, and oh, that'll translate, you be the leader. It just doesn't always work that way. Yeah, you know, I thought it was really interesting to hear that, and I think it's really good for uh, what he had the girls do to learn um, how to be a leader, who can be a leader, and it's not it doesn't just take one. It takes the entire team to come together, and, you know, each teammate has different leadership skills and different asset to the team. Obviously, both you and I sit here with with more Tiger Hawk on our on our uh, on our chest and in our heart. But you know, we talk about the Spartan way of, of it's not just it's not talk the talk, it's walk the walk. And and you know, the next routine is the most most important routine. And I, I'm sure every coach has uh, has their way. You know, obviously, having spent some time with Coach Libby, uh, great atmosphere in the gym and and uh, very positive and up, uplifting. But I was I was very impressed with with Coach Rowe, and again, just wanted to uh, to thank him for for spending the time with me. Yeah, uh, you know, each each team and each coach has their own thing that works, and I think that's what propels a team to look up to their coaches and you know want to follow what their mentor is doing. Obviously, when you look at uh, when you look at their lineup, you look at the. Uh, the, the freshmen that, that contributed last year, the freshmen that now are coming in and contributing routine after routine this year, uh, he, he's got something going in the right direction there now. Yes, he really does. You know, after the historic season last year, I think it's just on the rise from here for them. Gianna Khalifi will start on the beam for Michigan State. Yes, and Michigan State's beam is very extraordinary. It's beautiful. Probably not a recipe for a Hawkeye comeback. Anything can happen. This is true. Opening up with a triple series. Couldn't quite hone in and stay on the beam, so she had to take the fall. Saw that with Rojas on the triple series. Yes. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's the slightest thing you can be off. That's why a triple series is not very common. Most gymnasts just do the two series. Good fight to the finish. She averages 9.8, so first really off routine for her on the season here. Yes, and I think she was just sl slightly off and just couldn't bring it back to the beam. It happens. Anna Castillo now for the Hawks. Yes, this is her second time leading off the Hawks on floor. She worked her way into the lineup, which is great. An 
of just a, one of those freshmen for the Hawkeyes. That's beautiful front through to double pike tuck. Very nice extension on those leaps. pass is going to be around up hand spring double tuck. She finds the landing. Beautiful. What a great start for the Hawks on four. Hawkeyes will now apply the pressures. Khalifi with an 8-8-5. And Olivia Zermani now. I'm sorry. That's yeah. Olivia. She opened with a good series. Leg is a little low on that jump. Oh, she couldn't quite stay on the beam on that one. Chest was really far back. I think the Hawkeye Jim must know it now, too. Yes, they're just looking to get the energy high. Very nice dismount. We've got a floor consult here on Castillo's scores. We haven't posted there yet. Yes, it looks like the start values might have been off if I can see the table correctly. Yeah, with the second fall there from Michigan State, we will have ourselves a match to the finish now. Head referee comes out to have a chat as well. Bailey Libby makes herself comfortable. <laughs> oh. Adeline covering her up with the blanket. <laughs> Keeping her warm Ex before she goes. <laughs> exactly. We're not icing the shooter here. We're going to be, be very good here. Libby smacked the uh, head referee on the back of the head as she walked past. <laughs> Playfully, I should add. Nine, nine, two, wow, five for Hannah Castillo. Wow, that's a great start. Ooh. Hello, career high. And now we have the wonderful Bailey Libby. That was Joy Jackard that was on the beam. Uh, eight, nine, two, five. And yes, Bailey Libby now for the Hawkeyes. Beautiful opening pass. Oh, 
Every time I watch this routine, it just gives me the chills. I don't know if it's Bailey or if it's just the fact that she's Larissa's daughter and doing what she's doing. It's just exciting. Any extra pressure on Bailey being the coach's daughter? I think at times there could be, yes. Very nice jumps and leaps. Dancing into the corner to Karina. She's gonna finish with a Rudy and let's see if she can nail this ending pass. And she does. What a beautiful routine from Baby Libby. Hawks go two for two on the floor. She gets a hug from her mother. Skylar Schulte up next for the Spartans. I'm a little nervous after calling the wrong one last time. Yeah, they might have just made the quick switch before and we didn't know. Get somebody at the table to give us hand signals, help us out a little bit. <laughs> Beautiful leaps from Skyla. She really extends those leaps above the 180 mark. beam in the Big Ten this year. Yes, her beam is very, very solid and beautiful. Very nice finish. Very good routine, you know, to get the party started on the beam. Maybe had just a little trouble early on and then found a groove there as she finished it up. 9-8 for Bailey Libby over on the floor. Linda Zivet up next for the Hawks. Yes, and hold on to yourself. This routine is one to remember. Gonna open with the front through round of hand swing double tuck. Very nice. Beautiful towards the taste, but full. Very nice last pass from Linda. And now she's going to finish with some strong dancing. Very nicely done. Very nice routine from Linda. 9-8 for Skyla Schulte on the beam. I think the most fun part is you watch the, the young girls in the crowd. There's a, there's a girl sitting across from us over here that's performing right along with Linda. Yep, joining in, trying to do the dance with her, or making up their own dance. Nikki Smith up next for the Spartans. She 
Jackie gonna finish her team with a round up double tuck. Almost a stick, had to take a slight hop back, but it looks like they found their groove on the balance beam. Getting there for sure, 9-8-2-5 for Linda Zivit. Good score coming there for Nikki Smith. And the Hawks will turn to Karina Munoz on the floor. Yes, and this freshman really knows how to dance and make this floor routine so much fun. Third last week at Nebraska with a 9-8-7-5. She's gonna open with a front through round up in spring double tech. Very nice landing on that. Good control on those jumps. You can tell she's just a little off, but she was able to hone in. Get the crowd involved. Finishing with a round of handspring double pike. Slight hop back, but good landing. What a fun, talented routine. Got another judges conference on Nikki Smith's routine. We'll have a little delay before Gabby Stevens, Steven goes. Yeah, she's gonna be a ton of fun to watch in the coming years just with all of her energy and yes. enthusiasm. Yes, she is. Gabby's tied for fifth on the beam in the Big Ten. Averages 9.87, great score there. It's like 36 in the nation. Her beam is pretty strong. She just flies through the air and she really knows how to find the landings on the beam and just bring those arms straight down and be so sti stiff. Posted a 995 last year. Only been able to get to 99 this year, but Marina Munoz, 9775. At some point, if you're the judges, you just need to rock, paper, scissors here on this beam routine and <laughs> come to a decision. So, on Karina's routine, you talked about maybe as she was on some of her jumps, maybe just a little bit off balance. Is that where maybe some of those deductions come to get her to 9775? Or? Yeah, it probably was there, and then um, probably some deductions on the landings with her tumbling, too. Looks like the judges have come to a conclusion. Yes, it looks like their start values were off, so they had to meet and see what was going on there. So 9-8-2-5 for Nikki Smith. Good score there. Gabby Steven next.
very great routine so far. Just glides back and forth on the beam. Doing a handspring layout, step out, beautiful finish on that. Looking very solid. Well done. Very nice routine. Michigan State keeping the pressure on the Hawks now. Adeline Kenlin up for the Hawks. Front double full, very nice. Beautiful switch leap into a Ferrari leap which is not very common in the NCAA. Finishing with a back one and a half front layout. Beautiful finish. What a solid routine for the Hawks. Very nicely done there from Adeline Kenlin. 9-9 from Gabby Steven over on the beam, and that'll bring up Bailey Garcia. Pretty good anchor, fourth in the Big Ten. solid on that, just brought our arms straight down. A little off, but she just brought those hands down and went right into her leap. Did you get credit for saving that or did the judges notice and it's a half attempt deduction? No, I think that would be good. Slight hop back in that landing, but that was a great finish for the beam squad. 9925 for Kenlin over on the floor. Yes. What a beautiful routine from hers. And now we have the powerhouse Q. Watched her walking around. She had a winter coat on earlier. Yeah, she, that's like her routine. She likes to keep that coat on and just get ready. This floor in Extreme Arena is on the ice where the Iowa Heartlanders play. So it is a little chilly right down on the floor. <laughs> Opening up with a huge full in. There's that power we talked about on the beam. Yes, she was able to keep that front foot down. Be 
beautiful jumps. with a front through round up handspring double tuck. Beautiful step back and control landing. What a routine from Q. Q Henderson will wrap it up for the Hawkeyes. Now I believe we have Olivia Zarmani doing a exhibition routine, so they just swapped out on us. Yes. You know, that could have been in just the touch warm up. One was hitting and one wasn't. They were, let's make this change. Hawks will also have a floor routine. Marissa Rojas do the exhibition routine on the floor. Very nice series. So controlled. So steady. Nine nine five for Q Henderson. Made the switch to the fourth rotation. I reverse jinx the Spartans as the Hawkeyes come from behind and will win the meet. Beam is a hard event for any team. Even when you're really good at it, it can be hard. Yes. What a great exhibition routine. Good solid landing there. Aubrey Nick instead. Yes, remember they were trying to figure out who was going to start off this lineup in floor between her and Hannah. And Aubrey's actually probably earned it tonight. Had a 9.75 on the bars, 9.85 on the beam. I actually thought she might get the starting nod just based on those two performances. Yeah, you know, Aubrey worked really hard this summer and was uh, training all four events, and she still is training all four events. So it's pretty exciting to see her doing that and knowing that she can always fill it if needed. It's probably nice to have some of those utility players that can do all of it and do it all well. Pretty easy to get the crowd into it with Dancing Queen. Yes. Such a fun routine. What a way to end the floor party. Sarmani with a 9-7. We're actually able to, with the new electronic scoreboards, they're actually posting the scores on these exhibition routines. Yes. It's nice to see that. Give Adeline Kenlin the beam title tonight, 995, edges out Gabby Steven at 99. Give the floor title to Q Henderson at 995 as she edges out, actually edges out two teammates at 9925, Adeline Kenlin and Hannah Castillo both. Yes, this was such a fun meet to watch, and you know it came down to who could hit beam. Hawks will end up winning at 196.15 to 195.725. The interesting thing, you know, we, when I, in talking to Coach Rowe, you know, one of the things I asked him at the week was, you know, being a, being a competitive golfer, it's interesting. You can't play defense. You know, it's really just about what you do and how do you keep getting better. This will give his team something to look at. You know how to how to come to those 
how to come to those routines and, and hit them in the last, in the last, uh, that last rotation when you really need to come through to close it out. Yes, for sure. Looks like Aubrey got a 9.825, so that's great. We'll take a uh, we'll take a short break and we'll come back with uh, with the awards ceremony. We'll see how long it takes them to post scores, but we'll take one last quick break. You're watching Big Ten Big Ten gymnastics on Big Ten Plus. Arena, what a night! Good debut for Extreme Arena. This was a uh, first time they'd ever hosted gymnastics. We've had. Rodeo, hockey, volleyball, basketball. There's been all kinds of wrestling. stuff in here. Wrestling. <laughs> but uh, first trip around for, for gymnastics, and I think it did fairly well. Yeah, you know, the crowd was amazing in here tonight. It was really nice to see how full it could get, and I'm excited to see how full it'll get whenever we have Big Tens here. The energy was great. It was a really good atmosphere overall. We really anticipate at least one new crowd member for the Big Ten. Yes, Coach Hayden and I probably will be bringing the little one. <laughs> okay, we, were, we already talked about the little baby, the baby earphones to protect the protect the ears. Hawks just did a victory lap, which was kind of fun, just to to uh, I guess you'd call it thank the crowd for showing up and, yes. and coming out again. A great crowd here at, at Extreme Arenas. We're getting ready to to do the the final results. We'll run through real quick. On the vault, you had Skyla Schulte. Jerquavia Henderson and Linda Zivid. will tie for first with a nine nines. On the bars, you had a Michigan State sweep with Nikki Smith and Jory Jackard, 9.875. As you called her, the Beam Queen took the took the title. Adeline Kenlin with a 995. Great score there. And on the floor. Who else but the Hawkeye anchor, Jerquavia Henderson again, 9.95 to finish it up for the Hawkeyes. Three athletes participated in the all around for Michigan State. They were led by Gabby Steven, 39.45. So good overall score for her. Yes, yeah, she had a very solid beat. Nikki Smith and Skyler Schulte, 39.375 and 39.35. So. And Michigan State kind of leans on those three to give them the routines, and then a little bit of a little bit of a plug and play in the rest, and just had a little bit of an off night. But that's really the first, you know, in looking at their scores, the scores that the Spartans have produced, it was their really their first one. They've they've had a lot of good performances, and Hawks will be pleased to come away with a win, though. Yeah, for sure. You know, Michigan had a lot of fight in them today. Michigan State, sorry, and you know the Hawks just came to floor and they knew what they had to do. Like I said, I'm sure Coach Libby, you know, told them they needed to dance their heart out and really control those landings on floor. And that's what they did. And you're able to, when you can put those scores up early, especially as you're matching a score that's not what they want, that pressure just ratchets up just that little bit more and a little bit more. Yes. But both teams are ready to have a dance party now and then. I on know. the floor mat over there, so all is well at this point. So how does gymnastics travel? Will Michigan State jump on a charter and head home, or will they spend the night and fly out of Cedar Rapids commercial tomorrow? You know, I don't know what they did. It, I, it depends on every, every team's different, every school's different. Some charter home, some drive home, it yeah, just depends. I'm assuming they probably drove, but I don't know. That's a what, seven, eight hour drive to East Lansing? That'll get your money's worth. Yeah, probably on a bus, seven, seven and a half. <laughs> get some good quality sleep, I guess, on a Saturday night. We wait the final tallies. I think they're in. I've seen them. Yeah. Head judge making her way over to Coach Libby now. So now they'll have to they'll break down all the equipment. Iowa. 
is home next week, but back in Carver. So they'll break down all the equipment, take it back to Carver. And then they're gone a week at the Big Ten, at the Big Five. And since we've got a little bit, let's, you and I were talking about that before, the me too. You were explaining to me a little bit about how the Big Five works in terms of seeding for the Big Ten Championship, which will be back here in, in five or six weeks. Yeah, so the Big Five is against each session. There's two sessions, and each session um, the teams are against someone that they didn't compete in their regular season. So uh, Iowa will see four other teams that they did not compete in the Big Ten throughout their season, and the top two will be in the evening session of each session for Big Ten. So. Schulte gets the standout MVP for Michigan State. Couple choices for the Hawks. Adeline Kenlin gets it for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, she had a great meet today. It might have been an old teammate for Linda. Yeah, you know, they're pretty close outside of, you know, even if she transferred. The Michigan State champions on the bars. Good roar from the crowd that hung around for the results. Yes. As they start to shake hands, again, we'll be back next week. Iowa takes on Rutgers over in Carver Hawkeye Arena. You will have a new partner teeing it up for you. I will be elsewhere, so you'll be on your own for that one. Oh, well, you will be missed for sure. I appreciate that. So that'll do it from Extreme Arena. Thank you to our outstanding camera crew and the gang back in the control room for making us sound good and providing the pictures for Kira Hayden. I'm John Evans. Thank you for watching Big Ten Gymnastics tonight on Big Ten Plus.